Welcome to Bill Dance Saltwater. Great fun fishing that anyone can do. Yes, you can do this. It's often been said if there's one fish that every angler should catch before they hang their hooks up, it just has to be the magnificent tarpon. The tarpon's strength, power, and aerobatic ability is something that words can never describe. A fight with one is just something you have to experience. You have to feel it. Bill Dance has certainly been blessed to live such a moment and on many different occasions. And Bill will quickly tell you that when the battle between tarpon and angler ends, every ounce of you knows you've experienced fishing at its finest. You see, a tarpon has a way of becoming knotted in your memory, and maybe even your heart. And that too may be why so many anglers love to catch them. Today, Bill is fishing with his good friend, Captain Peter Deeks. The two have shared a boat several times before, catching redfish, snook, and speckled trout. But today in the canals just off the Indian River, along Florida's east coast, the target species is tarpon. Now these aren't monsters the duo was going after, mind you, but no one told the smaller tarpon this. They still fight as big and bad as ever, true to their nature. And Bill and Captain Peter expect no less and have matched their tackle to the size of the many Silver Kings. They'll be fishing the skinny water of Palm Bay, Florida's Indian River region. A Mako 19-foot skiff with a four-stroke Mercury 115 is going to help them cover the shallow areas the tarpon haunt. Captain Peter's a lifetime outdoorsman that has lots of credentials tucked under his fishing cap. He's a proven competitive angler and can back up his skill set with a biology degree that gives him a scientific edge or approach that some anglers don't have. You'd be hard pressed to find a more solid all around guide than Captain Peter. So with that said, let's head deep into the canals and see what these two guys find. These tarpon come in here from the Indian River. What reason do they come in here? Yeah, Bill, they, uh, they're, the smaller tarpon are attracted to fresh water. So there's lots and lots of freshwater tributaries along the coast of Florida, and they move up in those during the summer. And, um, and they'll stay until, well, they come in late spring, summer to early fall. And uh, the middle of the summer is probably the best time to fish for them, but. And they'll stay in the river. They won't go back to the ocean, will they? No, no, these fish like to stay in the river. They're, I mean, if they go in the ocean, it's food. They're like, you know, they're that big. So there's a lot of fish in the ocean that can eat them. <laughs> I love kids, I'm sorry. Hey, how'd you let me get the first one? That was just too nice of you. You're my guest, I'm, I'm polite. You're like the best captain I ever met. He's a little joker, but he's cute, ain't he? Oh, they're cute. I'll yeah, tell you what. Show us some, show us some junk. Look how powerful they are. You give you all you want. He yeah. likes it over there under the boat. Taking that pole and just folding it up. All rolling up there. Yeah, I see them everywhere. Hold him, buddy. Hold him. And they're strong for little fish, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I love catching them, fish like that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like that something wrong. I wish you'd go that way, though. Why's he huh? got to? Why's he got to sit under the boat? Go that way, fish. They just don't want to quit. What size, hook, what size hook are we using here? Tiny I got, little hooks. We're just using a <clears throat> quick release. It was quick. Did good. Today's show is sponsored in part by 
Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Quantum Rods and Reels. And Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Today's conditions log is brought to you in part by Fish Defunct. It keeps your hands scent free and clean, so fish can't smell you. Use Fish Defunct unscented while fishing and Fish Defunct scented after fishing to remove all odors. How far do these uh, creeks go back up through here? Man, long ways, maybe. They kind of never end. They go all the way out to the St. John's River marsh. They'll get real narrow and real thin, but I mean, they just continue on. Tarpon go m for miles up in them, right? Yeah, they like to follow a certain type of salinity and, and we just kind of push all the way back until we can't go anymore this time of year. But later in the summer, they'll be out by the mouth of the creek get a lot of rain, it pushes all that fresh water out. They don't have to go up as far. Oh, good. Ooh, good tarpon. Nice one, Bill. Yeah, baby. Ooh. <laughs> go, buddy, go. Bill, that's the rod with that light leader if you want to lighten your drag just a little bit. Right there in somebody's backyard. It can't get any, any more fun than that. Catching baby tarpon with my best buddy, Big Bill. Keep off. Ready for me to grab him? Yeah. That hook's barely in that corner. Right in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so much fun. Boom! Look at the power he's got. You've got a grip. You've got a grip on him. And he's still. Whoa! Look at that. Beautiful. Isn't that something? How pretty is that little guy? Oh, that little bitty. Look at that. Look at the size of that little bitty hook. They are such a grand little fish. Kind of sitting back in the water. Yeah, boy. Just, it's just such a, it's like a magical fish. I and mean, when they're small, they're even cooler. Oh, they're a wonderful ones. fish. I don't care if they weigh five pounds or 165. 165 is the biggest I ever caught. You get the experience fishing for these small ones as you do the big ones, except you get them in in five minutes instead of 30. I mean, they jump four and five feet in the air. And if you don't call that fun, you're pure, I mean, you're crazy. Come here a minute. Let me pet you back again. Look how wet that little tiny fish got me. Huh? I'm wiping my hands on you. Me too. Me <laughs> and you're wiping yours <laughs> on me too. Well, that's neat. Oof. Right here in somebody's backyard. You come up these little creeks. It's fun, isn't it? If I lived right there, I'd be on this thing every day. <laughs> Whoa. I love to see that. Let's see those jumps. Wow, look at that jump. <laughs> Goodness gracious. He's strong, ain't he? He's strong. Whew. He's wearing me out just watching. He's just a little guy and he's pulling so hard. Going back for the cover. There he is. If you want the bogle grips, you, get it. you can get him. Yeah, I'll just grab him if you want to hold the rod. I got it. You want me to put, I'll put your other rod in the rod holder. I got it. I said I got him. I'm gonna hold it for you. Watch that hook. It's gorgeous. Isn't that nice? Absolutely gorgeous. Yes, sir. It's fun catching the great big ones. It's really fun catching these little guys too. Well, I love know. to catch that bass. I'm telling you, that size. Look at the size of that it, eye. On this, this size on this light tackle is super. Today's show is sponsored in part by 
Mako Boats, building legends for over 40 years. Gamakatsu, world's finest hooks. And Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Today's equipment log is brought to you in part by Gamakatsu, because the fish of a lifetime only comes once in a lifetime. Today's show is sponsored in part by Strin, the standard of dependability since 1958. Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. And Mystic Lubricants, lubrication domination. There's a lot of fish right up there, I'm telling you. And so on a shrimp, they're, they're pretty, we want them alive, we want them swimming really well, and the current's gonna drag our line, it's gonna pull them. So we don't wanna hook them in the tail, drag them backwards, hook them in the head, drag them forwards. You can see there's his organs right there, you can see how it's translucent. And his brain is right in there. So when you hook them, you wanna hook it really shallow, right under that horn, that way you don't kill him. And when that current pulls your line, he swims really natural and straight. Look at here. Boy, he hit it. There's one. Yeah, Bill, nice tarpon. Woohoo! Woo! Woohoo! Boy, did you see a crazy thing go. <laughs> get him, Ben Dave! He's around something. Serious? Yeah, he's around a. See if you can get him off, otherwise, I'll go up there. All right, hang on. Woohoo! I got him off. Uh, Moses. Get out of that cover. Man, I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> that'll get you out of your seat. <laughs> Here he comes. Boy, I'll tell you what I love that. Boy, that guy... He went around the, He went around that tree. He crocheted me around there. He made you work. <laughs> <laughs> get over here, little fella. Look at that, boy. You got to get a death grip on them. I can't. Unbelievably strong. Pull that thing in the boat. If you want to get that little hook out of that little fella. That circle hook. There she I got is. it. Perfect. I can't get over. Isn't that something? Beautiful. It's a big root wad right here, and that tree goes way on out, and it just spreads out. And there was a big log out there. He went under the log and up and back under it again. And I learned something a long time ago. When a fish bushes you, if you'll apply the same amount of pressure to him as he applies to you, if he goes down and pulls down two feet, you pull back two feet. Notice I said pull, not reel. If you reel him and you reel him up tight on the cover and he can't swim, more than times than not, he'll pull the hook out of his mouth or he'll break your line. So if he pulls two feet, you pull back two feet. If he pulls a foot, you pull a foot. If he pulls three feet, you pull three feet. And what you're doing, you're allowing him to swim. And more times than not, you'll free that fish. But if you reel and reel him up tight on the cover, more, he'll break your line, he'll pull the hook out, or you'll lose him. So that's what I did on that fish. He pulled two feet, and I pulled back two feet. He pulled another couple of feet, and I pulled back. And finally, he pulled around, he came back around, and we got him. Do these fish relate to uh, the mouth of feeder ditches that come in to the tail end of shoals? Yeah, they do. You kind of- Just well, like, like a large mouth would in a, in a creek or a, a river? They definitely do. Look at that one. You know, you see them gulping air is how you locate them, but then once you find them, you can eat quickly identify why they're there. You can see that they're sitting behind a shoal or behind a log on the lee side, just like a largemouth bass. 
They relate to eddy water where you have a stronger current. Mm -hmm. And they're schooling fish, so you can't you can't pick a spot based on the location and the look. You have to find the fish first, but once you find them, because there's a thousand spots, a thousand little areas that are all act and look the same. But uh, when you see them, you know why they're there. The Bill Dance Question and Answer of the Week is brought to you by Mystic Lubricants and their complete line of JT4 Marine products. A full line of products for your full line of pursuits. Visit mysticlube.com today. Bill, what's your favorite hook for freeline and live bait and why? Well, it would have to be Gamakatsu's Octopus Inline Circle, and here's why. Normally, fish hook themselves so you don't have to set the hook. It's more difficult for the fish to throw. Fish hooks stay hooked. Lower fish mortality. Fewer fish swallow the hook. Fewer hooks in the angler's hand due to the hook design. And fish are hooked in the corner of their mouth. Today's show is sponsored in part by Millennium Marine, a new class of comfort. And Finnor, legendary tackle since 1933. Closed captioning is provided by Bill Vance Digital. Follow us. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series, chart plotter sonar combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive Panoptics all-seeing sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. Hey, you been looking for a tackle box that's tougher than a pine knot? Well, I've got one. Look at this. It's called Lure Lock. Heavy duty handles, hinges, and trays and insert dividers. So rugged and tough. Watch this. See what I mean? A fine product. Lure lock. Get you one. Come be a part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. Now what, what kind of fish are those? Those are called gap top sail catfish or sail cat. Now what are all those fish doing there? They're spawning. There's another albino. Yeah. Golly, look at them on top of the water right here. Ooh, I don't know. That Ooh. was pretty good. Ooh, look at here. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> get, going? Out, oh, get out of the bushes. Get out of them bushes. Man, I just wanted to catch one. <laughs> Look at him strip that line. There he go, Ciao. Look at him. He's so pretty down there in that clear water. He just turns and he just the whole water lights up. That is pretty right there. It does light up. I'm seeing it. I'm saying you can see a reflection it's like a mirror. six feet. Look at that. I mean, that, that is, is so pretty. cool. It really, I've never I, seen that before. I'll tell you what. It's, the water is just clear enough. Underwater, you could just, you can see it six feet. Let me tell you about the equipment that we're using today. It couldn't be more perfectly matched for these tarpon. We're using seven foot, six inch, medium heavy quantum smoke rods. And they're paired with quantum S3 inshore spinning reels that features and all aluminum unibody construction. Now the drags on these reels, well, they're smooth as country butter. And we've got them spooled with strand 20 pound superline braid and a clear blue fluorescent color. We can fight these fish out of any cover and boy, are we ever surrounded by cover in these canals. Woo, cover everywhere. And these fish know where to find it, believe me. There he is. Woo! Get out of the bushes. Get out of the Get bushes. Out of the bushes. Get out of the bushes. Woo! He's a flipper. He's a flipper. I'm 
just slide him right up there to you. Put your, put your grip on it. <laughs> I can't <laughs> promise anything. Another one. Perfect for fighting. I mean, when you're using a light tackle, I mean, he rips out drag, jumps 10 feet up in the air. Yep. Look at the big eyes. Better to see you with, my dear. Well, as the uh, saying goes, you can't ever have too much fun. And Bill and Captain Peter certainly proved it today. In fact, they had so much fun that this episode needs to be divided in half to get all of the action in. That's tarpon fishing for you. More fight, more drama, and more fun. Be sure to tune in next time for the conclusion of Mighty Bites and Mighty Fights in an East Florida adventure that has Bill and Captain Peter continuing to tackle tarpon near Palm Bay's Indian River. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you again next time on Bill Dance Saltwater. We hope you've enjoyed Bill Dance Saltwater and learned that you can do this. Please join us right here again next week.